Even all Marcus here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus Go video. And in this video, I want to cover streaming, and specifically streaming to Twitch.tv and YouTube. It is possible, but there are some hoops you have to jump through to get it to work. And in this video, I'm going to cover a couple of the different ways you can stream to Twitch or YouTube. All right, let's get into it. Alright, first off, and the most simplest way of streaming to Twitch is to use Facebook. So I've done a previous video where I showed you how to record your gameplay using Facebook. And basically within the Oculus Go, you go down to sharing, you go streaming, that shares it to your Facebook profile. And what you essentially do is on your PC, where you've got your OBS or your XSplit or something like that, go onto your Facebook page where the stream is, watch it have it open on your screen, and then in OBS or XSplit, add a screen capture window, and basically cut out the bit that you wanna do, and then add that to your stream. Simple. The downside to that is that it's terribly laggy. For a start, you've gotta wait for the lag that's on the Facebook stream, and then when it comes across as well, it's even worse. It's not an easy way of capturing the audio from the stream, you've gotta kinda of play around with it and get it to work. So it's probably actually easier just to have a, a microphone on your camera that's kind of pointing towards the headset and capturing the audio that way or plugging a, an audio cable in and capturing the audio straight from the headset. The quality is not great, it's only 360 by 360 and it's probably even worse when you're capturing it from a, an actual browser window. One of the other downsides to Facebook as well is that some games, some apps don't allow you to share. So you can't share everything on your screen. So it is continuous, so you can swap apps and jump between them, but if some apps, if you jump to them, the, the stream will pause and it won't work. So until you leave the app, then it'll start again. So that's one major downside to consider. But that's one option. I mean, it works. You know, if you want a quick, dirty way of streaming, stream to Facebook, capture your stream window, add it to OBS or XSplit. Easy. However, there is a better option, and that's using a program called Visor. Now, Visor is a program used on Android devices to be able to allow you to control your Android device on your PC. We'll use that to share a better version of your screen. One of the benefits to Visor is that Visor is much higher quality. You can sort of select some options. You can be still be completely wireless, but it is a little bit more stable if you use the wire to your PC. And there's no restrictions on what apps you can stream. So you can stream all the different apps. It shares your entire screen, everything, doesn't stop because it's basically streaming the entire picture to your PC. If you want to share what you're seeing in the headset, you could use this as well. Vice is great as well because the lag delay between what you see and what's streamed is a lot, lot shorter. It's milliseconds rather than with Facebook where it's literally 20, 30 seconds. And it's hard to, to adjust that where with Visor, it's almost instant. So much better option. The only downside to Visor is the free version is limited. There is a paid for version which varies from $2.50 a month to ten dollars for an entire year you can try the free version if you find that you get on well with it you can make it all work and you get a good result then go ahead and purchase it ten dollars for a year or 40 for a lifetime you get all the latest features you can stream in high quality that sort of stuff i think it's kind of worth it but you know that's up to you to decide you can just use the lower quality version the free version if you don't want to pay for it but you do get some nice options if you do let's go through the steps on setting up visor and sharing your screen so you can stream it first off Grab your mobile phone, go to the Oculus app, and go into settings, pair your headset, so connect to your headset if it's nearby. When it's connected, you'll see the option for more settings. In there, there's developer mode. Click on that, and make sure that's ticked and turned on. That basically opens it up so we can connect to it. Once we've done that, we can come out and quit that one. Then jump over to your PC, and we need to download two things. First, is universal ADB drivers. And I'll put a link to these in the description down below. So go onto this website, download this and install it. I won't go through how to install it because you know, it's just a wizard. I'm sure you can figure it out yourself. You installed many programs before. And then go to visor.io as well and download visor itself and install it. Now, so as you can see, you install these two things here. Once they're installed, you should get a visor icon to double click and open. Once Visor opens, you can see I've got Visor Pro because I did have paid for it because I do feel it is worth it. I'm not paid or associated with Visor at all, but you know, uh, I, I found it quite useful in some of the stuff I've been doing. So what we do here is grab your Oculus Go headset, plug in the USB cable into the headset, 
and the other end into your PC. Give it a second to recognize. It'll probably open up as a, a drive or something, but we can close that. And as you can see, it did pop up with the message just then saying view source. So it should find it. If not, you can just uh, you click this little link button here and it'll search for it if it's connected. But as long as you've got that ADB drivers in, installed and uh, the this program whilst you're running, then you should be fine. What you might need to do is jump into the headset and agree connection. So if you've not done it before, whenever you connect to a PC, sometimes you'll be asked for to authorize the connection. So if you don't see it show up, double check inside your headset, you may have a message to, to authorize. And here we go. So it's the easiest way to do this then is just literally click view. And then what that essentially does is opens up a second window and it allows you to see what's inside the headset. What I would do is make this window nice and large. It gives you both eyes. It gives you the left and right eyes. So in theory, you could create 3D video with this. If you want to do, record both eyes, upload them to YouTube as a side-by-side -side video, or watch it in your headset in side-by-side -side and it'll be full 3D. So it's kind of uh, an interesting thing to, to play with. What you can then do here, obviously, in your XSplit, is jump over to XSplit here. And you can see I've already got running some record in this anyway but I've already added them a screen. So you basically go add source. You can do this in OBS as well. Screen capture, and you can choose the section that you want to, want to capture. So literally draw a square around it. There, and here it is in my stream. Oh, in XSplit, sometimes I need to right click and choose exclusive, win exclusive window capture. There you go, and there you go. So you've essentially got the the window in a stream, ready to stream to Facebook, YouTube, do whatever you do, want to do. You do have this kind of box around it, but I think that makes it look more VR and people are kind of expect it. And you can kind of see the, the lag not too bad. It's pretty responsive. Uh, it is lagging a little bit there for some reason. But if you go into settings here, there are some settings to play with sort of thing. So you can choose the quality, that sort of thing and even you can use this program to record screen. And if you go into here as well, you can use it wirelessly. So you can click go wireless, it reconnects to your headset and you can actually disconnect the wire. There you go, the pop-up will pop up and you can go completely wireless and it should connect and it should be wirelessly connected. And there you go. So you can kind of shut your wires off. The bonus of visor is the delay between using visor and seeing it on screen and streaming it would be a lot closer. You still don't get the audio, so there's no audio capture, but what I tend to do is just kind of keep the speakers up nice and loud on this, and then I use my microphone, like I've got on top of this one, to record the audio. It does come across quite clear, um, and, and that's how I've been doing all my audio recording for the, for the Oculus Go. What you could do if you wanted to is plug in the 3.5 millimeter audio jack, run that off into your laptop, plug that in, and capture the audio that way. And um, that's an option. It'd be nice and clear and crisp as well. And you can also insert that into OBS or XSplit as a separate audio source. Uh, so you could manage that differently and, and set the levels. So, you know, it's kind of up to you. I kind of just set it coming straight out of my headset because then if it sounds all right to me, I know it sounds all right to you, so you guys. So enjoy streaming to Twitch and YouTube. Stick a comment down below if you do do any streaming. I'd be interested to pop by and have a little look. Let me know if this video was helpful. Give it a thumbs up if it was. If you thought it was terrible and I should have done something better, give it a thumbs down, but do let me know. Please, 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 please do let me know in the comments down below what it was I did wrong and I'll try and improve it for next time. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. There's plenty more Oculus Go content on this channel and other stuff coming. So make sure you also hit that notification bell so you get notified next time I do upload a video. And that's pretty much me done. I'm out. Have a virtual high five. <laughs>